If you get in front of my camera, I kind of fall in love with you. I don't have to love you afterwards, but I love you while I'm shooting you, you know. Whereas like a hooker loves you while they're doing you. An uptown one does. I don't know that the girls on the streets do. I've often been known to say that Andy helped establish photography as an art form in the eyes of the curators in the museums and the galleries. My first memorable session was with Sid Barrett. He looked like a romantic poet. And of course, the eyeliner he was wearing helped that too. And um, in some of the pictures, the naked girl in the background helped as well. It was a time of a, when there was a lot of experimentation going on in a certain element of the culture anyway. And it all came out of what used to be called the underground. We thought we were cultural revolutionaries. And, and looking back, we actually were. When I first met David, he was not at that point particularly well known. There were 400 people at the first gig I saw him at. David had gone to New York and he had met Iggy and Lou and Andy. And he brought that vibe, that energy, back to London with him. There were David Lou and Iggy popping around London in those days and me clicking away. People often ask me why I got all the best pictures of that period, because often I was the only person, only photographer around. That night I shot the Transformer cover. That remains his most famous image. I remember on stage shooting Iggy. I felt like a, like a game hunter, that I was <coughs> shooting him, literally. I had seen the vision, the metropolis vision of um, New York rising up out of the mist. Of course, what it was, was pollution. It was rising up. I remember Lou taking me up to the factory and uh, he took me up and introduced me to Andy. I think he was an unbelievable, unbelievably intuitive. And how intuitive people are, are interesting because it's nothing to do with being good or bad and not always necessarily anything to do with talent, although it clearly was in Andy's case. The session with Truman Capote took us into one of the rooms in the factory there. And I started, as, as was my way, like bouncing up and down and, you know, working on energizing people. And at one point, he very quietly, <laughs> he said, um, I just want to let you know that you're, you know, standing on some of my canvases. The one conversation I do remember having with him was that he said he would love to see his images on everything. He didn't distinguish between a high art and low art, which I think is a very postmodern attitude because people were still fairly prissy back in those days. I did some multiples. There was a certain inspirational value there. There was a particular Bowie image of him with the saxophone that's actually cut up a lot. That was definitely, I remember thinking of the Elvis with the gun when I did that. So I have a book out called Exposed and in the introduction I say that photography kind of ambled into my life and took over it. It's almost like a disease, you know? You kind of, you have to do it. If I go too long, I start to feel that itch. Debbie Harry, Blondie. I just saw her as being like the Marilyn Monroe of rock and roll. And I've got these extraordinary, overwhelming, beautiful pictures, including the blue one, that was the cover of Penthouse. Kate Moss, she's more rock and roll than 99% of modern rock and roll, as her, as her credentials prove. I've got to took some amazing pictures of Jimmy. When I'm on a roll and on a buzz, I, you can, you're plucking them out of the air, you know. Yeah, that's why I like it. For me, it's more about energy than anything else. Yeah, the clothes and, of course, the makeup and hair, they all have a certain importance, but more than anything else, it's about the energy. Everybody to me, to me. It's about time I got put out to pasture, but I won't go. I will not go. I will not go quietly into that dark night. Isn't that what Dylan Thomas wrote? <laughs>